हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू जी एक्सप्लेनेशन सो इन लास्ट वीडियोज आई कवर द टॉपिक थ्री पॉइंट टू दैट इज पॉइंट स्ट्रक्चर एंड डेटा फाइल इन सी प्रोग्रामिंग सो इन प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड कवर्ड पॉइंट अर्थमेटिक सो इन दिस वीडियो आई ट्राई टू कवर ऑल दिस टॉपिक्स दैट इज आई ट्राई टू कम्प्लीट थ्री पॉइंट टू एम सी व्यू क्वेश्चन ओके सो बिफोर सॉल्विंग दिस एम सी व्यू क्वेश्चन आई होप यू नो द थ्योरी पोर्शन ऑफ ऑल दिस इफ नॉट वी हैव कवर द थ्योरी पोर्शन इन द सी प्ले लिस्ट एंड ऑल्सो गो थ्रू आर एम सी व्यू क्वेश्चन ओके सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट्स गो टू द पोर्शन सो द फर्स्ट सेकेंड पार्ट दैट इज पोइंटर एंड एरे सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज इन सी एन एरे नेम इज कॉन्स्टैंट पॉइंटर दैट पॉइंट्स टू द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट ऑफ एन एरे ओके येस सो इट इज ट्रू बिकॉज इन सी एन एरे नेम दैट इज सपोज इफ यू हैव इंट ए इज अ कॉन्स्टैंट पॉइंटर सो दिस नेम ऑलवेज पॉइंट्स टू द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट दैट इज द बेस एलिमेंट ऑफ द एरे सो ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर लेट्स गो टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू which is what is the correct way to initialize an array in c okay so if you see okay so this is correct but small bracket this is not correct okay okay this is correct fine so b is correct c no we cannot again this is not the correct type and again in d this is not the correct type so b is the correct answer for question number 2 yeah b is the correct answer okay let's go to next question which is Which of the following statement is true regarding array and pointer in C? So array and pointer are the same and can be used interchangeably. No, they are not same. Array and pointers are different, but the array name behaves like a pointer. Yes, we discussed in question number one that the array name itself points to the base address of the array element. so anything that points to the base address it is a pointer so it behaves like a pointer b is the correct answer array and pointer have similar syntax but they are completely unrelated no array are the type of pointer but pointers cannot be used as arrays no again this is not the correct answer so b is the correct answer let's go to question number 4 so what is the size okay what is the size of the array declared as int array 10 okay so 10 the size is 10 only so this is the correct answer okay let's go to question number 5 what does the expression array 2 represent in c as you mean array is an, an integer array so what is the expression array 2 okay so the value is stored in second element of the array yeah so if this is a array okay its name is arr and if you are referring to the what two yeah so it refers that the value is stored in the second element of the array okay the memory address of the second element no if it is memory it is denoted by the sum of all the elements of a second element no and the size of the array no okay next is which of the following expression is correctly access the third element of a two dimensional array okay so if it is a two dimensional array it is represented like this something like this uh, 0 1 and suppose 0 1 2 like this okay so second element they are telling yeah so first element and second element okay so question was uh, representing the third element of an array yeah? so third element is 0 1 2 so this one so this one is represented by 0 2 okay zero through second column so b is the correct answer let's go to next question what is the relationship between pointer and array in c okay so pointer and array are completely unrelated concept no pointer can be used to iterate over the elements of an array so if you have gone through the uh, numerical of array and pointer so you can understand this is the correct answer array are used to store pointer in other variable no completely incorrect pointer are usually to dynamically allocate the memory for arrays no so this is the b is the correct answer let's go to question number 8 so which of the following statement is true regarding passing array to function in c passing array to function okay so array cannot be passed to function no array can be passed to function when passing an array to function the entire array is copied to function no we can also copy element by element only a specific element of array can be passed no we can also pass entire array when passing an array to a function a pointer to the first element is passed yes 
okay so if you pass the complete array so it carries a pointer that is always pointing to the first element of the array so d is the correct answer let's go to question number 9 which is what is the result of an expression of size of array where the array where the array is an array of 100 integers okay what is the result of expression of size of array where array is an array of 100 integers okay so if you completely understand this this uh, where array is an array of 100 integers so 100 integers are there and each integer is of size 4 bytes we can say so 400 is the correct answer let's go to the next question yeah so which of the following statement is true regarding array indexing in C array indexing start from 0 and goes up to the size of array minus 1 yes if you are declaring an array of array of size 5 so it starts with 4 and go till 4 okay so it starts with 0 and go till 4 so A is the correct answer array indexing start from 1 no array indexing can start from any no array indexing is not supported in C no so A is the correct answer fine so that was all about pointer and array so next topic is passing pointer to function okay so let's go to the question very quickly in C what is the purpose of passing a pointer to function so first uh, like MC first um, option is to allow the function to modify the original value to save memory by avoiding unnecessary copying of large data to enable the function to access global variable and to improve the performance of function what is the purpose of passing pointer to a function it is to allow the function to modify the original value question number two which of the following is the correct syntax for declaring a function that takes a pointer as an argument okay so correct syntax of declaring declaration so in declaration we have function name function type and argument and argument type and if it is a pointer we declare it as type star and ptr so this is the correct answer okay so let's go to next question okay question number three what is the significance of using constant keyword when passing a pointer to function so it indicates that the pointer cannot be modified within the function so if you know constant keyword is used to fix the value okay so this is the correct answer it specifies that the function should return a constant pointer no it allows the function to modify no it indicates that the pointer is a constant value and cannot be changed so it indicates that pointer cannot be modified within the function so a is the correct answer let's go to another question when passing an array to a function does the array decay into a pointer okay it means that does the array uh, changes or does does the array change or we can say it point as a pointer or it can be represented as a pointer we can say the meaning of this decay yes the array decays into a pointer to the first element yes as i told you the array always points to the base address yeah the array name it always points to the base address of the first element of the array so it act as a it decays as a pointer we can say yeah so a is the correct answer next is which of the following is the correct way to pass a pointer to a function by reference in c correct way to pass a pointer to a function okay so void function int void function int star address no correct way to pass a pointer to a function by reference in C void function I think it is passing by reference it is uh, pointing to passing by reference so this is the correct answer I guess yeah okay so here they are giving as C but I think B is the correct answer please uh, once uh, check this okay let's go to next question what happens please do let me know answer of question number five and even i'll check and i'll let you know so what happens if a null pointer is passed to a function in c it will result in the compilation array no the function will receive a null pointer and can be handled ac accordingly yes so it always receives a null pointer and it can be handled okay so there is no runtime error compilation error we can see 
so which of the following is true regarding a scope of pointer parameter in c okay so it is the scope of a pointer parameter is limited to function it is defined in the scope of a pointer parameter extends beyond the function no it cannot go beyond the function the scope of pointer parameter depends on the storage class of a specified you no know, the pointer do not have a specific scope no the scope of pointer parameter is limited to the function it is defined in so a is the correct answer next it which of the following statement is true about passing a pointer to function in c okay so passing a pointer uh, passing a pointer to function okay only stack allocated variable can be passed as a pointer no pointer can only be passed by value to function pointer can be passed by value or by reference to a function yes so c is the correct answer question number 9 what is the purpose of void pointer when passing a generic pointer to a function what is the purpose of using a void pointer okay so it allows the function to modify the original value through pointer it specifies that function accepts any type of pointer yeah so if you have learned about void pointer so void pointer means that if you declare any pointer as void pointer so it can be used with any data type for example if there is int a you can store the value of address of a to this b or if there is a float b you can store the value of b to this b so it can accept any type of pointer we can see the b is the correct answer okay so next is structure versus union so what is the main difference between a structure and a union so a structure allow is storing multiple type of data while union can only store a single type no it can also store multiple type but one at a time a structure provide better memory utilization compared to union no union has better memory utilization structure allocate memory for each member independently while union have the same memory as yes, union it shares the memory among the members so c is the correct answer let's go to question number 2 which of the following statement is true regarding a structure a structure can have members of different sizes yes it can have members of different sizes and different types okay question number 3 what is the memory requirement for a structure or union in c the memory requirement is equal to the sum of sizes of its member the memory requirement is equal to the sizes of its largest member yeah in union what we do is we allocate the memory which is equals to the size of the largest member in union so b is the correct answer which of the following is true regarding the initialization of a structure in union a structure and union cannot be initialized during declaration it can be initialized a structure and unions can only be initialized with literal value no structure and union can be initialized using designated initialization yes we have to use a uh, initialization or designated initialization we can see in order to initialize the structure or union what is the keyword used to define a structure in c struct of course a is the correct answer which of the following element is true about memory layout of structure and union structure and union have same memory layout okay no structure have fixed memory layout while union have variable memory layout union have a fixed memory layout while structure have real no the memory layout of structure union depends upon the compiler and system yeah d is the correct answer what is the purpose of using the keyword type def keyword okay type def so if you know what is type def if you use this type def int a so after this this a will act as integer so you can write a num instead of writing int num okay so it is used to define new type based on existing structure in union yes it is used to define the new type question number 8 which of the following statement is true regarding the storage size of union in c the storage size of union is equal to okay which of the following is uh, to the storage the storage size of union is equal to the sum of size of its member no the storage size of union is equal to the size of its largest member yes b is the correct answer so last question is what happens if a structure on union is assigned to another structure on union of the different type in c so it is result in compilation error the assignment is allowed but the data is converted into large target type the assignment is allowed and the data is truncated to fit the target type or the assignment is allowed but the behavior is undefined yeah so we cannot tell what will be the answer of this 
so assignment they, they will not show any error while assigning but the behavior is undefined so d is the sorry d is the correct answer okay so let's go to another topic which is array of structure so what is the main difference between structure and union okay array of structure i guess so so i think i have repeated the question from structural union so in next video i'll be coming up with i think i covered structure versus union yeah i have covered till this so in next videos i'll be coming up with the remaining topic till then stay safe and thank you